Hey guys, what's going on? This is Andrew here today, and I'm going to be making a video that I really haven't done in a long time, and that is going to be my newest edition of the series that I like to call Highlights in My Collection, and today we're going to be talking Star Wars. I want to give a special thank you to Koopa's World, who I'll be leaving the channel of in my YouTube description, for shouting out my YouTube channel and helping me gain a few more subscribers. I also want to thank Jordy Slasher Gaming, who I also will leave the channel of in the description, for coming to this channel and suggesting that I make this video. And I also want to thank every single one of you for your support because we have finally reached 50 subscribers and I'd say that's quite a great milestone. That's my first milestone on this channel. With that aside, let's get into the topic. As stated in one of my other videos, I almost have a complete original Xbox Star Wars collection and I also purchased the entire Star Wars collection on Steam for the May 4th sale. I grew up watching and playing Star Wars for hours on end and that led me to getting so many of the games from the series. Let's start looking at some of my favorite Star Wars games here. And by the way, if I keep sniffling, that's just because my allergies this week are absolutely awful. So the first game that we're going to be looking at on my list is Star Wars Rogue Squadron for the Nintendo 64. So I don't know if this game is on any other platform, and honestly, I don't even know if I have it on Steam because I kind of just blindly bought the entire collection on there. But this game, from what I've played so far, is a pretty great game on the N64, and... For a Nintendo 64 game, I think it looks pretty great. Basically, this is one of those games where you're really just in the ship the entire time and flying those missions based off of the story uh, from the original trilogy. So this is a pretty fun game, as is. I think it controls pretty well and looks pretty well, as I just said. I've played this plenty of times, and I am looking to eventually complete it. I haven't sat down fully doing it just because I can never stand the N64 controller. But um, one of these days, I will sit down and beat this game because it's fun from what I've tried. Alright, the next game is another N64 game. And that one is my favorite Star Wars game that I have. Also, the only other Star Wars game I have for the system. Star Wars Shadow of the Empire. So this is another game that also looks uh, pretty great on the system. A lot of times with Nintendo 64 games, I don't like playing them too long because they hurt my eyes after a while. But this is one of those games that honestly doesn't do that and it's pretty enjoyable to play for the most part. This game, basically, I haven't gotten too far in it. But from what I've seen uh, in the game is you have basically a variety of missions. So you're basically doing the same kind of stuff that you're doing in Rogue Squadron, but you're also getting to be to where you're able to play in like a third person shooter mode. And I think that's pretty cool. Uh, this is a very great game for its time, I'd say. And to this day, this is one of my favorite Star Wars games that I've really ever played. And although it's one of the last ones that I've ever gotten, you know, this is one I'm probably going to remember for a very long time. And just like the last one, I will have to go back and eventually beat this one. The next game on my list that we're going to be talking about is Star Wars Battlefront for the PS4. So obviously, you know, there was Star Wars Battlefront, the classic versions that came out on PC, PS2, and Xbox. But there was this game that came out uh, on the PS4, Xbox One, and PC, and happened to be something that was kind of like a whole new look at the Star Wars Battlefront series. I think they did a good job executing this one. I feel like the first one was really fun. I didn't get to play the second one. I never got the second one. I did recently get it on Steam, the second one, and I will be trying that one out, and maybe even talking about it later on, but for now, this one was a pretty good one. I mean, I didn't play this one for that long. My brother played it more than I did, but this is one of those games, honestly, where I can play with anybody. When I got this game, uh, I got it on Christmas, and all of my friends got their PS4s that year as well, so we all hopped on the system and played this game, and this is one of those great multiplayer games. Uh, we will be talking about another Star Wars Battlefront game uh, in this whole little collection thing right here as well but this is the first battlefront game that we're going to be talking about uh this one's pretty good i have to say i do like the classics better but uh for a star wars game made by ea and a game made by ea at this point i have to say that this is one hell of a game and you know same developers behind battlefield so why should i be surprised as mentioned before i was going to be talking about the star wars battlefront classic series as well. Uh, I was going to talk about 1 and 2, but I felt like I should just pick my favorite of the two, considering that, you know, if I just talked about both of them, it would honestly be me really just talking about the same exact things. So basically, I'm going to be talking about Star Wars Battlefront 2. Funny, we just talked about the uh, PS4 Battlefront 1, and now we're talking about the OG Battlefront 2. So this is one of my favorite Star Wars games 
of all time. It may even be my favorite Star Wars game of all time. I now have bought this game three different times. The first time I bought this on PC when it was on sale at one point. The next time I got it was for the PS2. And this was my third time getting it because I really wanted to get the best console version of this game. Honestly, this is one of the best Star Wars games that has ever come out, and I see why they wanted to make Battlefront again, because they knew it would be profitable. But, honestly, nothing beats the classics. What got me back into this game, specifically, was my, one of my friends that uh, got a PS2 from Game On in Miller Place, New York, when it first opened. And he got the game on the PS2, like I just said, and I went over there and we played it for some time. Uh, the servers on that game were up for a very long time, and at the time that he got the game... He actually had his PS2 connected uh, to the servers, and it was pretty cool to jump on there and see that there were still people playing uh, this game specifically online. Unfortunately, obviously, Xbox shut down their servers real fast, and there was no way to play this game online on this version, but this is my favorite console version of the game. It looks the best, and it runs better. Honestly, this game on PS2, I couldn't play for too long because the frame rate was absolute garbage if you played two players, but this one on the original Xbox was good, and it's got a great story and everything, uh, well, not really story, I should say, but how it ties into the story of, uh, the Star Wars, you know, the prequels and all that, how basically you're basically put into the prequels, uh, fighting those missions and all that stuff. This really was executed extremely well, so let's get into the next game. Next game on my list is actually a game that I put down when I was a child and basically traded back after a day. For whatever reason, I think I was really just into the Lego games at that point, and I really wasn't interested in anything else. It's kind of weird, that's how I was back then, I just wasn't into those type of games that were live action yet, until The Force Unleashed, which I will talk about in this video as well. But, that game was uh, Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, and nowadays, I find this game an absolute masterpiece. I don't know what it was back then, why I didn't like the game, because I was pretty young, but... Going back and getting this game again, which I finally got all these years later, only about a week ago, uh, Revenge of the Sith is an incredible game. I feel like they executed this game pretty well. Um, the fact that they added some extra features to the game rather than just sticking to the script in the movie, I thought that was an awesome addition. Just the fact that you were able to basically have an alternate ending to what Revenge of the Sith could have been. Uh, to where basically they added the movie content into the game from the movie, cutscenes from the movie, uh, snippet some of them to have it make more sense to what was going on, what you were doing. <laughs> Honestly, this game was absolutely incredible, and I haven't played through it all yet, but I am looking to eventually, uh, this is the next game on my list that I'm going to be playing just because I've wanted to get back and finish this for a very, very long time. Alright, the next game on my list is going to be Star Wars Obi-Wan, and I actually like this game for some reason. I'm one of those people that just loves to play games that are like unfinished and broken, and this game is one of those games. Honest, honestly, this game I don't think is an actual good game. It's just a game that I enjoy myself. Basically, I started this game, got pretty far in it uh, towards the end of the game. My save file just magically disappeared. Don't know exactly what happened to it, but uh, I started up the game again at one point and really never got to finishing it. But the way that I look at this game, other than it being buggy, is it's honestly not the worst thing in the world. I actually had a lot of fun with the combat, regardless of it being broken in a way. It kind of reminded me of what the Force Unleashed is. So basically what this would be, in my opinion, is like a predecessor to the Force Unleashed. And although it wasn't a great uh, predecessor to the game, I think it was a good start. I feel like this was rushed out, rushed out really fast and it could have been avoided to have it been rushed out so fast. It could have been a very good game in my opinion. And Considering that uh, that Kenobi series is coming pretty soon, um, this makes me excited for it regardless of it basically being nothing like what's going to come. Uh, I have enjoyed this game so far. I will eventually beat the game. But yeah, that's my take on this game. Uh, let's look at the next one on my list. And that is one that I've enjoyed basically my entire childhood and... Still, to this day, can't really put this down. I have this on every platform besides the PS3 now. Star Wars The Complete Saga. So basically, uh, what's my story with this game? Well, 
I grew up playing Lego Star Wars 1 and 2, uh, specifically on the GameCube at uh, my friend's house on the PS2 and on my cousin's GameCube as well. Eventually down the line, uh, my cousin got a Wii and I was obsessed with the custom customization that you can do with a lot of the characters in this game. And on top of that, I was obsessed with just the fact that everything was packed into one. I feel like this was a great game and... Although I find myself playing LEGO Star Wars 2 more nowadays, I feel like this was like a perfect compilation of everything, and this really does match up well to the Xbox 360 and PS3 version, especially this one. Um, the thing about this game, what I really like about it, I don't know why I really like it, but it's just the fact that you're able to swing your Wii Remote to swing the lightsaber in this version. Uh, I think that's pretty sick, honestly. It's a weird thing to kind of talk about considering it's just this sway of a controller it's a simple movement but that's the same way that i felt about the force unleashed i like that that was incorporated into the game i think it was a very useful uh, feature to put in the game especially for something like a star wars game on a motion control remote uh i'm currently replaying this now on pc because i connected my laptop to my 4k tv in that room and i'm playing lego star wars again in 4k and it looks amazing so this game was incredible, uh, I'm going to put it to the side now. So if you know anything about DS games versus the home console variant of the games, a lot of times you got a very different game. And that same principle kind of held true for uh, the same game I just talked about, Star Wars The Complete Saga, but this time LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga is on the DS. And this one is actually one that I ended up playing more. Not that I liked uh, this one better than the other one. It's just I didn't have the copy of the Complete Saga on the Wii for a very long time. I think I got this game when my childhood was basically already over. So my main uh, copy of the game that I played was the one that was on the DS. And this one was honestly a great game. I mean, one thing that I have to say that I really liked about the DS version versus the console version was it wasn't really just reused stuff from the original game. Considering that the DS wasn't up to a par with the Wii and everything, basically they had to remake a lot of the levels from the ground up. Where they did uh, make some of the levels be very similar to the console variants. I d really did like some of the 2D aspects of some of the levels. E and even at some points, I liked them better than the 3D versions of the levels. One of the levels I have to say was my favorite, that was the 3D one, had to be the Darth Maul one, because it was pretty close to the original console version, and it really made you feel like you weren't missing out. So although this game definitely uh, wasn't 100% up to the level of what the console version was, I have to say that this was an incredible version, and this is one of those games I have to say that although it was drastically different from the console version, I didn't feel like I was getting much taken away at all in terms of gameplay. This really was a great port of that game. I don't know what happened, but I can't find my uh, Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2 game for the Wii, but let's talk about it anyway regardless of not being able to find the copy. I just talked about in this video what I thought of Star Wars Obi-Wan and how it was basically like a how it felt like a predecessor to that game and well, I really do enjoy The Force Unleashed. I haven't played through the entire game by myself. I've played through it with friends and cousins and you know, a lot of other people that I know, but I never played through it completely by myself. However, I do have to say that it has to be one of my favorite Star Wars games in terms of gameplay. I feel like they really nailed not only the gameplay itself with the, uh, the force actions you can do and the lightsaber moves and combos and all that other stuff, the move combos, and even the story, I feel like really just blew away most of the other Star Wars games that have ever been released. I don't think they'll ever release a Force Unleashed 3. I can't see them actually doing that considering how the game ended, but it would be pretty interesting to see another game come out like that considering that it actually uh, was canon. So I really did enjoy the game a lot, and honestly, I can see myself playing through it again considering that I do have the game on PC. I would love to see that game with uh, the 4K uh, upscaled on my TV in the other room, uh, as I have already thought that the game looked incredible, even on the Wii on a CRT. So, that's basically that. Let's get into my last two games. 
So these last two games are really just honorable mentions because I just got them and I know they're incredible and I really just haven't gotten much time to touch on them. The first one is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, which I have held off buying for a long ass time. Like, long time meaning like six to seven years at this point. Basically, when I first started my retro gaming uh, collection and everything, uh, this was one of the first games I wanted to get because I was starting to collect for the original Xbox very early on. I always saw this game, and considering this is one of the bigger games for the original Xbox, the price was up on it, so I always skipped out on it and ended up getting cheaper uh, games, basically getting like four games instead of getting this game for the price that it was at. So I finally eventually got this uh, at East End Gaming in uh, Oakdale, New York, a retro game store there. I picked this up with a few other games, and I really just can't wait to finally get into this game because... Just based off what I've heard, what I've seen, I'm very excited to get into this. So, like I said before, have not touched this game before. Not even uh, picked up a controller and even tried it before. So, uh, very excited to finally play this as I've been waiting years to get my hands on it and give it a shot. Okay, so the last game on my list in this video in particular has to be Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast. So, I actually have this game on the GameCube as well and ended up just repurchasing it on the Xbox because I wanted to play it on the system with the better graphics and the fact that I have component cables opposed to the composite cables that I use on my GameCube. Also wanting to complete my entire Star Wars collection in that regard as well. So basically, I really don't remember much about this game. I remember playing it a lot though when I was younger because this is one of those... One of the only Star Wars games I had on the GameCube, minus the LEGO games. The Force Unleashed was on my dad's Xbox 360, and this game was on my GameCube. And all I really remember was I never got past the first level. Even to this day, I haven't gotten past the first level. Haven't tried to, haven't really put much effort into it. But I do remember playing Capture the Flag a shit ton by myself on this system. Also playing against my brother in this game, and other friends that came over. So... Basically, from what I remember, this is an incredible game, and I really have to get back and play it again just to see what I was missing in the story and really just look back at the um, multiplayer once again. Obviously, you can't play online, but you can do the local multiplayer. And one of these days, I want to sit down with a friend and play this again because I remember just having a ton of fun with this uh, in the past. Anyway, guys, that's the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you all for the 50 subscribers. This has been a great run so far. I'm very excited to keep growing with you guys. Once again, thank you for all of your support. I will see you all in the next video.